Welcome to the very first episode of our series, The Addicted Brain, Why It's So Hard to Break Free. Over the next several videos, we'll explore how addiction takes hold, why it's so difficult to escape, and most importantly, how recovery is possible. This is where it all begins. Because before we can talk about habits, trauma, or recovery, we need to understand what's happening inside your head. Your brain isn't just a lump of tissue. It's a finely tuned survival machine, built over millions of years to protect you. Every craving, every decision, every burst of energy, it's your brain whispering. This will help you survive. But what happens when that survival system gets tricked? What happens when the very wiring that once pointed us toward food, water, and shelter is hijacked and redirected toward something harmful? That's the story of addiction. So if you've ever wondered why cravings feel impossible to resist, why willpower alone doesn't work, or why some habits quietly grow into life-consuming struggles, stay with me. Because today, we're pulling back the curtain on how addiction hijacks the brain. The human brain runs on rewards. Think of it like a built-in GPS for survival. For our ancestors, rewards meant life. Finding ripe fruit in the wild. Reward. Discovering safe shelter before a storm? Reward. Strengthening bonds with family or tribe? Reward. Each one powered by dopamine. A chemical messenger that doesn't just make us feel good, but also teaches us. Do that again. Dopamine is often misunderstood. People think it's about pleasure, but really, it's about learning. It's the brain's way of saying, this action kept you alive. Remember it. Repeat it. Without dopamine, our ancestors wouldn't have remembered which foods were safe or why staying close to the tribe kept them alive. Now imagine dopamine as a highlighter pen. Each time you eat, laugh, or feel safe, dopamine swoops in and marks the experience in neon. This is important. But addictive substances and behaviors, alcohol, drugs, gambling, endless scrolling, don't just highlight. They flood the page with ink. They hijack the system with an artificial spike far stronger than natural rewards. Here's an example. Eating a good meal might raise dopamine by 50%. Spending time with a loved one might boost it by 100%. But cocaine? That can spike dopamine by 300%. Methamphetamine? Over 1,000%. Even something as simple as scrolling on social media creates dozens of small dopamine hits tricking your brain into chasing endless novelty. And this is where the compass goes haywire. For thousands of years, the compass needle pointed north, toward survival. But under the weight of those artificial dopamine surges, it gets pulled sideways by a powerful magnet. Suddenly, your brain isn't gently nudging you with this feels nice. It's screaming, this is survival. This is life or death. This explains why cravings feel so overpowering. Think about the last time you had the urge to check your phone while trying to work, or the way some people can't stop thinking about that drink waiting at home. It doesn't feel optional. It feels urgent. Because the brain has mistaken it for survival. Now, let's go deeper. Picture your brain as a forest filled with trails. At first, the path toward an addictive substance is just a faint dirt trail. You can see it, but it's not the easiest way through the woods. But every time you repeat the behavior, every drink, every smoke, every scroll, you walk that path again. And the more you walk it, the clearer it becomes. The grass dies. The dirt hardens. Eventually, it becomes the main road. And if you keep going, it doesn't just stay a road. It becomes a highway. And here's the kicker. When your brain is in that forest, it doesn't send you down the winding, overgrown trail that leads to healthy rewards like connection, hobbies, or meaningful work. No, it funnels you straight onto the highway of addiction. Because highways are fast, automatic, and familiar, this is why addiction doesn't feel optional. It doesn't feel like just one more drink or just one more scroll. It feels necessary, like oxygen, because your brain has literally rewired itself to expect it. And over time, the system gets even sneakier. Dopamine doesn't just spike when you take the addictive substance or perform the behavior. Eventually, it spikes in anticipation. 
That's why you crave a drink before you've poured it or feel restless until you check your phone. Your brain has already run ahead, saying, I know what's coming. Give it to me now. This is the hijack. The compass, once set for survival, now points somewhere else. The survival system itself, the one thing you thought you could trust, has been tricked into chasing something that might destroy you. So let's recap. The brain's reward system was designed to keep us alive. Dopamine worked like a highlighter, marking essential survival actions. Eat, shelter, connect, repeat. But addictive substances and behaviors hack that system, pulling the compass off course. What started as a faint trail becomes a highway. And suddenly, cravings don't feel optional. They feel like survival. That's why addiction is not weakness. It's not a failure of willpower. It's biology. It's your brain, hijacked and rewired to chase the wrong rewards. But here's the real question. If addiction begins with a hijacked brain, where does it actually start? Because no one wakes up addicted. Every story begins smaller, like a glass of wine after dinner, a quick scroll before bed, or a casual bet with friends. The danger comes when that harmless habit slowly crosses an invisible line and transforms into something much harder to control. And that's exactly what we'll explore in the next episode, From Habit to Addiction. So if this episode gave you clarity, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss part two. And if you know someone who might be walking this line right now, share this with them. It could be the nudge they need to understand what's happening inside their brain. This was just the beginning. The story of addiction has many chapters, and we've only opened the first page.